Welcome back. This is Radius with the second episode in the Chicago Bears franchise series. I had to laugh because I don't know when I was able to really name the number of the episode the last time. In the Dolphins franchise, we're really far. We're up to the high 90s. I think we're going to hit 100 or something like that in total. Uh, but yeah, this is the second episode of this uh, yeah franchise series for the worst NFL team out of the 2022 season. It's going to be the kickoff episode, um, uh, the first gameplay episode. Uh, so a lot of things to take care of, right? We've got the season goal, we've got the uh, opening day keys, we've, we're going to have to choose a draft class, uh, weekly strategy for the Carolina Panthers, and so on and so forth. We're going to start with the basics, right? The franchise settings. Uh, I will now go to the gameplay sliders selection. Um, I'm going to reset that just for you so that you can see the difference here. Uh, this is the base setting, of course. Uh, I have preloaded my own sliders, the Dreadia sliders. You can download them out of the community uh, center or community tab. Uh, I'm now in the franchise. Just press the triangle button. I preloaded them. And here we go. Bam. They're in. The basic idea is uh, to just reduce the quarterback accuracy and, uh, you know, just reduce some stats that uh, add to a more realistic experience with the uh, here to win uh, update um, the only um, skill that I really have to adapt in uh, preparation for games is this one here the quarterback accuracy depending on which quarterback we play I leave it at 38 or I push it up to the to, to 40 41 something like that especially for uh, really really low rated quarterbacks that just improves the realism a little bit but overall I get really good results with uh, something like this overall um there's also the uh the 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 uh penalty section and so on and so forth so all of that is in there uh you can just download my sliders out of the community uh center and then you are set uh, as for the league settings we are uh, of course playing on all madden because <laughs> other than that i would never have as much rage as i have so there we go I also turned off the practice squad stealing because I use the practice squad as a sort of a talent base where I just want to have uh, players in there that I want to use for the future. And if they get stolen as, as soon as they are viable to use, then that really sucks. So there you go. Those are the base settings. Uh, we're going to set the season goal. Uh, you, will, you will understand why I do that in a second. Um, I will go for seven wins, right? Uh, the 2022 season ended four and 13, so four wins. Um, I would really like to get half half wins, half losses, or yeah, something like that. Um, base idea is just to see some progress, all right? Everything above that would be absolutely out of this world and, and unrealistic. So the four wins is really a little bit low. I'm going to go for uh, for the seven wins, really think that that is something that we should strive for. But the first season is always a killer. Next up, we're going to dive into the opening day keys uh, media press conference. It's opening day this week and fresh start for every team around the league and you'll be facing the Panthers. What's the key to victory? Well, uh, we want to have a stifling defense. It all starts with defense. We plan on making their offense uncomfortable and keeping them off the scoreboard as much as possible. Basically keeping them off the field. If we can do that, I think we have a shot. You mentioned making their offense uncomfortable. Where does that start? Hmm, that's a hard one. I haven't looked at the team yet, but I feel like it'll be disrupting the pass. We want to control the skies. Great pass defense leads to a lot of great things and makes it much harder for them to score and win the game. All right, so I reckon we'll have a target uh, allow less than 200 yards passing. Yeah, that makes sense. Game planning tip. Well, that's a no-brainer, but thanks nonetheless. All right, next up, we are going to choose a draft class. Hire and assign scouts. As you can see, this is just a random, random group in here. I will now go to prospects. Uh, mini tutorial, how do I load draft classes? I have... Uh, a tutorial for that as well. Just look that up on my channel. It's basically the same for uh, a lot of Madden versions. You just click L3, it says uh, edit players, and then you can choose from Madden Share. You can edit this draft class or you can import a local file. I have one pre uh, prepared already and I will be using this one. It is the 2024 final 
because this is the it's a very nice series right it's it's a creator and he has the 2023 final 2024 final 2025 2026 2027 from then on it's really hard to find good draft classes i tested quite a few but those are the most consistent ones that aren't really too crazy so i'm gonna load up this one here uh then it will add all the players in there and uh here we go we've got the uh we've got the 2024 draft class here caleb williams for instance is a quarterback prospect jt tumelo at left edge michael johns quinn Ewers, uh emika Ikbuka, and so on and so forth just a lot of players that you might already know from the uh from college football um, but this is a really really nice one in there a uh, really nice class um good face <laughs> face uh, scans uh, in in air quotes but also really like the the depth that this has also no swear words or something like that so the quality is really good and i can immediately see bo collins right there 27 wide receiver out of clemson i used him in the in the dolphins franchise series absolutely fantastic and a great wide receiver all right that said and done we will now head over uh take a look at the roster straight away jimmy g himself is uh, leading the quarterback room for the carolina panthers here uh he's 31 years old 76 overall normal dev trade so usually i'd say well this is nothing to worry about on the other hand take a look at his attributes he's just a solid uh solid bridge qb and i don't think that there's much more to be said about him apart from we won't take this easily but i think this is a good 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 team to start with uh in this franchise series mitch trubisky is here as well then we've got mike white and then matt corral i really think they should give matt corral a shot and just try and focus him a little bit more yes he is not that highly rated overall but to be honest having mike white here having mitch trubisky here i might as well give the young guy a shot right Running back is Jamal Williams, 28 years old, 88 overall. We've got James Robinson and Tariq Cohen. Jamal Williams, let me just check this out quickly. Uh, former Green Bay Packer, former Detroit Lion. Now he is a Panther, so that is a significant change to the running room here. James Robinson is also an interesting addition. Jacksonville Jaguars, he was a free agent and now he is in here. Tariq Cohen is, I think he's the only uh, real Panther Nah, he's a former, nah, joining the, the Panthers. All right, but he's a former Bear. So there we go. We see each other again. All right, fullback, Adam Prentice. Really love this one. It's just so funny to me. I don't know why. Apprentice, Adam Prentice. There you go. Some dad joke level humor for you. Uh, wide receivers. We've got DJ Moore. We've got Odell Beckham Jr. We've got Terrace Marshall Jr., but he is injured. We've got LaVisca Chanel Jr., but he is injured. We've got Shai Smith, and then we've got Jared Stearns. DJ Moore, of course, a longtime Panther, and he's just a really, really dangerous one. Elite wide receiver, if I ever saw one. Uh, so we're really going to have to watch out for him. Odell Beckham Jr., of course, formerly an LA Ram, and then he was without a contract um, this uh, season because he was just uh, injured. And uh, then uh, he's a free agent. Right now, it's quite unclear where he will go right now. Did talk to a few teams, but uh, I hope he gets a nice team to, to join. We're not going to cover these two because they are injured. LaVisca Chenault, of course, coming from uh, from the Jacksonville Jaguars. Terrace Marshall Jr., is he coming from another team now? Carolina Panther. All right, and then we've got Shai Smith, 24 and 76 overall. South Carolina prospect also. Uh, Panther now. Tight end Tommy Tremble. He is a longtime Panther. Eric Gilbert now out of the draft. And Ian Thomas is uh, also here, the third tight end. Very balanced room in, in, in terms of the overalls. Eric Gilbert, of course, uh, will be getting better over time. This is uh, this just makes sense. Tommy Tremble as well. He will also get better, especially with the start of trade. So that works for me. Left tackle Ike McWonu. Uh, superstar death trade already for him. Left tackle, really dangerous. Uh, Cody Mouch or Mouch behind him. Uh, Ike McWonu, very nice left tackle. Would like to have him at age 22, already 83. Super solid. Left guard, Aaron Brewer, 25, 75. Brady Christensen behind him. Let's check out Aaron Brewer. He's got a normal death trade. The ratings look, uh, look decent, actually. 
Uh, let me just see. Former Tennessee Titan. Now he's with uh, the Panthers. All right. Bradley Bozeman is the center. 28 and 77. Mike Nowitzki. That's actually funny. There's a basketball player called... I think it's Mike Nowitzki, isn't it? Anyhow, <laughs> returning to the matter of football. Uh, Bradley Bozeman is just a really solid center. He's got good strength. He's got just good, good attributes overall. So don't really see a lot of weaknesses. Of course, he could be higher rated. But just a solid center right there. Right guard, Austin Corbett, 83 rated, and Kate Mays behind him. Austin Corbett also think was with the Panthers before. Yes. All right, right tackle, Taylor Moulton, 29 years old, 84 overall. Will Richardson Jr. behind him. Taylor Moulton, also a Panther, uh, with a history of being a Panther since 2018. Uh, uh, just, yeah, very solid right tackle. And the offensive line actually not looking too bad, I have to say. The defense is what is a little bit worrying to me. We've got left edge Brian Burns, 25, 93 superstar Dave trade. Jordan Birch behind him, but we're going to gloss over that one. Brian Burns is going to be dangerous. 53 is his number, and that's a number we're going to keep looking for on the field because number fourth ranked left end in the league, this is going to be really deadly for us. Next up, right edge, Yetur Gross Matos, 25-77, Amari Barno behind him, uh, Barno out of the 2022 draft, um, and Yetur Gross Matos, also a longtime Carolina player with a start of trait, he will certainly get better, he is really, really good in game, way better than his overall of 77 would let you think. D tackle, Derek Brown, 25-89, Kevin Givens, and Siaki Ike, who I drafted as a Dolphin. Um, I wasn't really too sold on him, to be honest, but that might have been a different draft class that I used there. Here, yeah, he's got good strength, the tackle, power moves, awareness, so he might be nasty at some point in time. Right now, not really, um, but the start of Derek Brown with a start of trade. This is nasty. Ninth best defensive tackle in the game, and uh, really, really worrying to see him coming at you. The linebacker core, let's take a look. Frankie Louvu, 2681, behind him, Brandon Smith. Really negligible, but uh, Frankie Louvu really with a pretty good, pretty good uh, combination of core attributes. 11th best rank le uh, ranked left outside linebacker. Everything except for power moves and zone coverage is really solid or very good, but especially the pursuit, the hit power, the tackle, the play recognition, and the awareness are the attributes that stand out for me because those will just make him very, very hard to come by. Uh, New York Jet, uh, but starting 2021 at Carolina Panther. All right, that is good to know. Mid linebacker, Josh Obert. Had him in the San Diego Crusaders rebuild. Damian Wilson is also here. And Blake Lynch. Josh Obert. I would say he's a decent mid linebacker. A little bit of a journeyman, as you can see, looking at the teams he was with over the past few years. Is he going to be the most dangerous linebacker? Heck no, but he will be uh, at least a challenge to come by. Combine that with Damon Wilson, those two mid linebackers, we might have a chance throwing right there. Shaq Thompson, and right outside, he is really dangerous. 29 overall, 86, uh, 29 years old, 86 overall, that's what I wanted to say. Carrie Coleman, still uh, nothing more than a backup rookie. But Shaq Thompson is really, really dangerous. Look at those stats. Eighth best right outside linebacker. Yeah, he's going to be coming for us, locking down the field. Longtime Carolina Panther and a really dangerous player. Cornerback room. Let's take a look at these here. JC Horn, we've got Dante Jackson, we've got CJ Henderson, Chris Abrams Dream, a rookie, 71 rated, Keith Taylor Jr., 80, uh, 68 rated, and Stanley Thomas Oliver the third. Uh, that is important, by the way, because there's two other Stanley Thomas Olivers coming before him. Now he's the third. So there you go. Um, I would ignore everyone below CJ Henderson, to be honest. CJ Henderson, 24 years old, 79 rated. With a start of trade, he really, really is quick, dangerous, agile, acceleration is good. Uh, Dante Jackson is just so good in covering ground. Take a look at that. Speed, acceleration, jumping, agility, but also the play recognition. And this is one of the players that I really raged a lot about in other rebuilds because he just smacks that ball out of the air. That's all he does. Sometimes he does have an interception, but just getting there, smacking it away, it's really hard to get away with wide receivers from him. JC Horn is the starting cornerback here, 83 overall, start if trade. 
again speed acceleration agility jumping so high but the other attributes also pretty good tackle maybe not as much but again if he slaps it away it's incomplete and that's that that's enough that's all he needs to do the free safeties jeremy chin 2587 and demarco helms a rookie jeremy chin is just he's just really really dangerous really really good 11th best ranked free safety Again, core attributes, speed, player recognition, acceleration, just make it hard. Pursuit makes it hard to get away from him. Awareness is also in the mix here. So this is just a really, really, uh, I would even say elite free safety, in my opinion. Strong safety, we've got Adrian Phillips and Xavier Woods, both a little bit on the older side, both a little bit on the veteran side, if you want to put it that way. I think I even used them in the San Diego Crusaders. Uh, Adrian Phillips, formerly a uh, New England Patriot. Now he's a Panther. Xavier Woods, I don't think that is initially a Panther, right? Yeah, Dallas Cowboy, uh, Minnesota Viking, now Carolina Panther. So the safety is really good. The kicker is Greg Zerline and the punter is Johnny Hecker, formerly an LA Ram. Taking all that into consideration, we're going to take a look at a weekly strategy right now. Um, for the for the Dolphins, it was mostly the short pass defense that really worked very well because it's quite easy to uh, to pull off. Um, you can also focus a lot of defensive players around uh, the line of scrimmage, which is also positive. Um, going for deep passing usually enables them to go for for runs. Uh, the medium passing is, in my opinion, really hard to control. So short passing is the way that I'm gonna go here. Uh, player health, uh, basically everybody's half dead. <laughs> so we will start with a, a light uh, training. We will be going with full pads, but I want to go with the splits just for most players. I don't want to risk an injury. I want to uh, uh, just spread the experience points as much as I can at this point in time. The offensive game plan, to be honest, I don't really have one. Um, the running inside might make sense because I have solid running backs, but we don't have Bijan Robinson, so it really is going to be hard. Um, I think the blitz counter might be a good idea. Um, uh, throwing, I'm a little bit uh, not trying to lean into that one too much, so we're going to go with the recommendation here. Run inside just makes sense, um, and uh, we're going to go with the full pads, but we're going to go with the splits again. I just don't want to aggravate any injuries, don't want to risk any injuries. Um, and yeah, just but still have the have those points ready. Focus players this season will be Jalen Carter. That just makes sense. Felix Anadiki, Yuzoma and Aaron Beasley. To be honest, Aaron Beasley, not really feeling that one. I think Justin Fields needs some help here. Um, and Felix Anadiki, Yuzoma. I will take a look through the squad because I think there might be players that could use the help a little bit more. Uh, Darnell Mooney, probably Chase Claypool. I mean, we need to get him higher. He's 75 now. Cornelius Jackson. I really like this one here. 60 overall, but not right now. Co-Comet, uh, Braxton Jones. Is there anybody that we really need to bump quickly? Sam Mustafer might be a little bit too old. Tevin Jenkins will, will grow on his own. Logan Brown with the question mark. We don't know what his uh, what his overall death trait will be. So that is definitely one that we will be looking at uh, at some point in time. But he's my starter at right tackle, so he will need the help. We're going to go with this. What about the game plan goal today? Uh, we're going to try and get one interception. That should be okay. We're going to allow 20 points or less. Let's be a little bit less aggressive 400 yards jesus christ 250 gonna go with that one and we're gonna try and win the turnover battle it's gonna be hard but let's just aim for that one defensive training results are in no injuries a lot of experience points and uh you will see why there's actually a lot of bonus experience points for a lot of positions right here i'm gonna show you that in a second when we check out the team itself as I said, a lot of things to take care of before we get into this first game, but it is the start of the season. We have a ton, a real a metric ton of uh, points to spend here. I think I will be going through this uh, now, but I will be speeding it up in the episode. Otherwise, it's going to take it's going to take ages, man. All right, let's start out here.
All right, all the updates are done, are completed. Uh, we have also covered the squad upgrades um, and I, for good measure, I just went over the depth chart as well. So what I wanna show you right now is the lineup that we will be having for this season. Um, I really uh, thought about the lineup here and I'm gonna be approaching this from a little bit of a different angle. Uh, the offensive line, as always, in my opinion, is one of the most important parts just to make sure that you have time to, um, you know, to, to figure out which play you wanna choose, to figure out which receiver you wanna go for, et cetera, et cetera. Just the, the quarterback, you just need time. And the offensive line needs to provide that time. And I'm fully aware that this is a, a one of one of the weaknesses that we have. All right, we're 78 overall rated. Definitely have a long, a long way to go to improve this. Um, but looking at it, I'm, I don't really feel too bad. The basic idea was to have young players as the starters. I managed to do that uh, for everybody except for uh, the left guard position. Uh, we've got the Jones here at the left tackle position. Uh, we've got uh, Fisher as a mentor who will be helping the development. We've got Whitehair, we've got Borum, and we've got Taylor. Taylor, again, is a mentor uh, that will add to the development of Larry Borum. I do hope that he will be able to take over from Whitehair this season at some point in time. Uh, the center is Sam Mustafer, standard uh, center for, uh, for the Bears. Um, I brought in uh, Greg Van Roten, again, a mentor to help the improvement of Sam Mustafer. Tevin Jenkins starting right guard behind him. I've got Winters, who again should boost uh, the experience gain here. And most important on the right tackle position, Logan Brown, the rookie with a hidden dev trait, 68 right now, which is pretty bad. But behind it, we've got Compton, who will hopefully help us uh, improve uh, Brown quicker. On the tight end position, we've got Cole Komet. We know that. We've got uh, Lewis as uh, a mentor. And they've got Gindorf out of the draft. And I actually want to see Gindorf play a lot more, even if he's a little bit uh, lower, of course, uh, than Mercedes Lewis. The wide receiver room, we've got uh, wide receiver number one is Darnell Mooney, of course, uh, Chase Claypool, slot wide receiver. And then we've got Johnson here with a start of trade, which I really like, uh, but the 60 is really worrisome low. Uh, Equinemius St. Brown over on the wide receiver two position. We've got Rob Woods with a mentor tag, but still at a high uh, rating to help us. Uh, he was really good uh, in the San Diego Crusaders franchise. And uh, yeah, Cole Komet is the sixth backer because I only have five wide receivers. The running room, uh, we've got David Montgomery, start of trade. Of course, he's the starter. We've got Khalil Herbert, 78 rated. Uh, and then we've got uh, Tristan Ebner. I was really thinking of, uh, and I'm still thinking about bringing in uh, a mentor here, maybe putting Ebner somewhere else. Uh, I don't know if I can put him into the practice squad, um, but I do feel like he still has some room to grow and maybe maybe uh, a mentor would help us here. I'm gonna, gonna let that simmer a little bit. Nick Bowden, of course, is the fullback. The backups are just other players. Starting quarterback, of course, is Justin Fields. He's 24 years old, 81 overall, start of trade. We covered that in the last episode. 16th best ranked quarterback. So he, we really are starting quite, you know, from a good position here, right? And uh, should only get better. He's a scrambler, of course. He's, he's quick, he's fast. So I do hope to utilize that as well. Uh, Tyra Taylor is the backup with a mentor tag, helping Justin Fields improve. The defense. This is a little bit more of a mix and match situation here. There's definite weaknesses here that we need to iron out very quickly um, on the uh, linebacking side. I'm gonna start just at the top of the screen here. We've got Melvin Ingram, who at the same time uh, is basically, I think he even has a mentor tag. We also have a uh, Wilson here. He's 72 rated, he's 28. I don't see a big future for him, but at the moment he's, he's just the best we have at that position. Um, middle linebacker is Drew Trank. We brought him in out of free agency. Pretty happy about this one because he can play with us for quite some uh, quite a quite the time <laughs> and improve. Uh, 78 rated scheme fit, so that should work. We have uh, Jack Sanborn behind him. He's 23, 73 rated. I would really like to develop him and use him as my starting mid linebacker at some point in the future. I'm um, really thinking that this could be a nice storyline right there. 
Dante Hightower is uh, the mentor here, helping along these two players. On left outside linebacker, I have uh, Carlos Dunlap the second. I think he has uh, the mentor tag if I'm, yeah, he's the mentor. Um, and I'm using Beasley as the starter here. It's a rookie, so he will have to grow quickly. Um, but I do want to give this one a shot here. Strong safety, Jaquan Brisker, of course, uh, Thomas as the mentor, again, to help him along. Over here, we've got Eddie Jackson, and we've got Devin McCourty, who at the same time, and that is actually pretty cool, uh, has the mentor tag. So he's going to help us uh, because he still has a pretty high rating, but at the same time, he's going to help Eddie Jackson develop. The cornerback room, uh, we have... Um, Jackson Senior here with an 85 rating. We've got AJ Bui who's 77 and he still is, or other way around, he's a mentor and he still has 77, so that is pretty cool. Uh, we've got Carla Gordon here. We've got Jalen Johnson, of course, Michael Ojemudia. Pretty happy with this cornerback room, to be honest. Uh, at D tackle, I'm even more happy because we have Jalen Carter here, 88 already. That is the best defensive player we have, and he's a rookie, hidden death trade. Can't wait to see what that is going to be. Justin Jones is here as well as the second D-tackle, and then we've got Peters as the mentor. Right edge, that is Anadiki Yuzoma, uh, a rookie out of Kansas State, 76 rated, good strength, good tackle, really liking that. He was, he was my round two pick, so I do hope that he will bring some much needed power to the team here. Uh, I've got Robinson as a the <laughs> obligatory uh, player here and uh, Vinny Curry as the uh, left edge mentor right there. Um, on the right edge, I now have uh, Robert Quinn back <laughs> behind him, Travis Gibson and uh, Vinny Curry also standing by here. Robert Quinn, 33. Um, he has a mentor tag, uh, but he was also the best free agent that was on the, on the board available. So that's why I brought him back to the Chicago Bears. The former bear is back in Bears country. So that is actually a nice storyline in itself. Special teams, we've got uh, Jill as the punter and Cameron Dicker, he suddenly was in my practice squad. So of course I was gonna take him over the initial kicker whose name I've forgotten already. Um, all the specialists are set. So I do think that we will have, uh, yeah, we will have a good, Good and interesting journey here. There's some other players that can take over from Darnell Mooney as a slot wide receiver at some point in time. Looking at you, Claypool, and looking at you, Robert Woods, but more at uh, Chase Claypool here. Uh, the practice squad is also filled now. I cleaned that out a little bit. Sorry to the rookies that were really low, but uh, yeah, I brought in a few players that might be helpful, uh, like Devin Tompkins, 67. Uh, I think I even brought him back, but it's just the speed was something that I couldn't ignore. Jeremy Ruckert uh, brought him out of the free agents pool. Really like what he did at the Dolphins. He was just super solid there. And apart from that, just a few players. I tried to hold on to the initial players that I had, like Leatherwood, like Wheelis Jones, like Carter, Schaefer. Um, but I also wanted to bring in some other players. I, th I still think that Mike Jurgens has a role to play, but for the moment, we're going to have to put that on ice. So this is the squad that we're going to be competing with at the beginning of the season. And without much further ado, guys, now finally the time has come. We're going to dive into the first game against the Carolina Panthers. Of course, we're outsiders, but uh, we are the home team. Soldier Field in Chicago. I've been to Chicago, really, really like the stadium. I did manage to, to see a game because it, well, I was always there in off season, which is bad on my part. But yeah, there you go. Um, shout out to James, by the way, a friend of mine who is originally from Chicago as well. And I uh, sort of made the decision to go for the Bears a little bit easier. We're going to be lining up in the home uniforms, just in the uh, 2022 home uniforms um, with the blue tops, the blue helmets, white pants, and then the blue socks. Um, here's a little bit of blackness for you and the Panthers in the uh, card away uniforms. Justin Fields leading the team out here, and I really hope that we can pull off something nice here. Let's see what we can do. All right, so we get the first offensive drive, and uh, I really like digging deep into these playbooks here for uh, for different teams. Of course, I will have to 
uh, get used to this one here because uh, it'll just work a little bit differently, of course, to the one that I'm used to at the moment. Jesus Christ, time is running out. Oh, Lord. Come on, guys. There we go. That was a quick one. That's good. Ah, David Montgomery going off here towards your right hand side. We get the first down quite quickly. That is positive. All right, that is positive. I'm going to take that one immediately. I did look at the time. Jesus Christ. Then almost, almost got penalized for doing that. All right, let's just see. I don't really like those abroad ones. I want to see the, the one I want to have direct ones. David Montgomery, I just know that he is a... Uh, that he's no Bijan, so of course we will have to keep that in mind. Um, I feel like this play might work well, so let's get over here. I think that's Gindorf, number 87, on the run. And here we're, we're held. Second and nine, that did not play out the way I wanted to. Let's try this one here. Let's bring Justin Fields in to play the ball to David Montgomery here on the left-hand side. And is the screen going to work? Let's see. And it is going to work now. That is beautiful, isn't it? Taken down here, holding onto the ball. At the 47 is where we are stopped. And uh, there we go. Actually, pretty good move. Justin Fields. I do hope that he can stay fit. Uh, because that was the main problem for the, uh, for the real Bears. Uh, in the 2022 season. He, he wasn't able to stay fit. And that was a major problem. He was off the field. His backups just didn't didn't uh, do what he did. And so that caused a lot of problems. All right, David Montgomery tried to go forward with the user truck here. Four yards. That's a respectable pickup. Inside zone, left-hand side. We're going to try and stick to the game plan. And uh, that means we're just going to go for a lot of runs. Try to break through here. Number 25 does hold us. Third and two. Halfback zone weak. Left hand side. Cody White here will have to clear some space for us. I'm a little bit, uh, how do I put this? Conscious about the, uh, about the right side. Because I just know that there's a rookie there. Derek Brown picks up an injury for the Panthers. That might even be... Might even be a relief. The skyline of Chicago in the background of the stadium. Looking really nice. We're going to go with a mesh spot. I want to try one out right now. I've got Mooney. I've got Komet. I've got Gindorf. Don't really know if I should trust him. But he's available. So let's let's try that. Equinimity of St. Brown on the long one. I tend to go for the, uh, for the tight ends on those type of plays. Four yards. That is respectable if not really that much of a help but let's go with this one darnell mooney let's try and get him uh included in the play shall we let's go darnell mooney go 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 wow that is a quick run but smacked away because the pass was i don't know it was weirdly lofted don't you think that looked strange that looked a little bit strange all right let's try and go with this screen here towards the left hand side the first one that we did uh Worked quite well. Again. Get the first down. Shoved outside here. Number 21 comes. And gets a pretty hard push. That's Jeremy Chin. Number 21 for the Panthers. Fields gets the ball away. And here we go. That. Was. A good. Play. I am satisfied. Let's take a look here. What do we have on offer? I'm going to go with the halfback uh, ISO. Let's try this one out here. Cub Lamo. Oh, wow. That was a good one. Good block here, actually. Was that Gindorf? I think it was. Let's go. 24 zone open. Two yards. Second and two left-hand side run for David Montgomery. Let's get some space on him. He's, he's a pretty powerful player, which is good. To start out with, we're gonna have to see how uh, you know how much he can hold against the power that is incoming here. Four seconds. We're gonna get this play underway in the first quarter, just uh, just because I can. Ah, uh, running into traffic. Four yards only. Could have been more. Probably should have been more. So far, only we've been playing, and I mean that is fine by me. All right. 
Halfback, quick pace, a left-hand side run. We're, I mean, we're immediately starting with a better halfback here in uh, comparison to uh, who we started with uh, in the Dolphins franchise. And we are going to be in the end zone. The Chicago Bears score first. First touchdown in this franchise series. David Montgomery. Good one. Good one. Because I can only think back at the halfbacks that we used in uh, yeah, the Dolphins franchise. And those were so horrible. I mean, Raheem Mostert, no disrespect. I think that is not too bad. Um, but, uh, yeah. The other one, Chase Edmonds. I mean, he was just really, 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 really bad. Really bad. Ooh, I shudder to think of that one. Really didn't get anything done. So, again, Montgomery. Let's go for a run here. I think that all of these plays are not really what I want to see. We're going to go with a slant here. Let's see. Chase Claypool. Can we get him involved? David Montgomery is going to be my backup. There we go. Into traffic. But Chase Claypool is able to hold off the defense here. And... Uh, we will start out now with a left-hand side run. And there's a gap. Oh, that was beautiful. Well done. So, how does the read option work? I mean, I'm really, really... <gasps> I'm not used to running with my uh, quarterback. But uh, at some point in time, I will try that one out. Going to be going with Chase Claypool here now. Because, you know, going out of the pocket just means means danger right means an injury can happen and that is not something that i want to see is this true tranquil just chilling here number 49 good throw just in fields tight turn by chase claypool that was good that was actually pretty good all right halfback zone week two minute warning incoming into the second quarter man time flies all right, let's go. Play action crossers. Darnell Mooney, of course, the first receiver. I don't think that I'll be going with him. I think I'd rather look for uh, Cole Komet right there. There we go. More or less what I wanted to see here. Six and seven for Justin Fields today. That is cool. That is really cool. I mean, let's remember... I started out with a left-handed Tua, which was uh, probably not the most helpful right there. Smacked away here. I think that's Dante Jackson. Trail shake. Darnell Mooney. Go commit on the short one. RPO zone peak. Ah, let's try this one. Four verticals. I want to see this one. I want to see Montgomery. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. And taken back on number 94. We actually don't even gain anything here. We're going to go with double slants. And we will be looking for Montgomery. But, I mean, Mooney or some Brown. We might get some space behind those linebackers. Oh, dear. Oh, that was hyper inaccurate. Fourth and nine. 52-yard field goal for Cameron Dicker. Let's see how windy Soldier Field is. Usually very. But, I mean, that kick is brilliant. Cameron Dicker, best kicker. I had to say it, I'm sorry, but just had to do that. All right, 10 and 3. Come on, defense. All right, 10 and 10. Our defense is not really up to snuff yet. I have been dunking all my staff points into the defense so far. Oh dear, oh dear, oh, didn't get the ball away. Did not get the ball away. And that's a sack. Second and 20. We're going to go the double cross here. Montgomery, Mooney. And time is out. Oh, wow. I'm actually not too sad about that, to be honest, because that just means now we start the second half. Um, you know, with, 
without having to deal with the long distance right there. I'm right, gonna defend the short pass. I feel like that worked reasonably well. Left kick off here for Dicker, who's our kicker. Yes, I might be saying that quite a few times. Jesus Christ, who's number eight? Oh my God. Did you see the giant running in there? Come on, D. Come on, D. All right. Defense can't hold them. That is going to be a problem. Because I feel like we will... I mean, we will make mistakes on offense. But if we can make some progress here... Um, on the defensive side, that's a flag. That is a flag. Is that going to be a face mask? Illegal blocking the ball. Offense. Illegal blocking the ball? Oh, come on. What it, What even is that? Still first down. All right. Gonna have to look at those penalty settings, I think. All right. Let's see. I think we're gonna go to the left here. 21 yard line, but that's our 21 yard line. We're pushed back super far. David Montgomery, up oh, brought down here. Second and 13. We only get a yard. We only get a yard. Uh, I can already feel this game slowly but surely moving away out of my grass. We started well. Can't really be too mad about that. That was a good one here. Come on, Cole. And there we go. Pushing forward. Third and three. All right. So we get a uh, pretty good pickup here, actually, from Cole Komet. Let's see. Chase Claypool, left-hand side. Uh, Economy is some brown. Got to go to the right here. Cole Komet might be an option, but I think Claypool will be my go-to guy. There we go. Ball is underway. He gets it. Oh, he breaks away even. Oh, we get more yards than I hoped for. That was good. Up to the 50. There we go. Chase Claypool. With a good start. I mean, I uh, never really uh, saw that much of him at the Steelers. I did see more of him this... Uh, uh, in this season now, when, since since he joined uh, the Bears here in real life. But, yeah. Let's go to the left here. Third quarter, 50-yard line is where we're at. We're going to go with David Montgomery. Are we going to get back here? Good throw. Good block. Another good block here. But number 21 does go. Quite a hard jump here. I think that's Jeremy Chin again. Justin Fields getting the ball away. More or less precise, I would say. And then David Montgomery actually cutting back inside, then out to the left, towards the outside again. That was not bad. Let's go with a quick base left-hand side here. See what we can get done here. Jordan Brown, number 76, does go across for the block. And how far can we go? We get taken down at the 22-yard line. Chasing us, of course, was Luvu. They just have fast players. I'm going to go for a read option here. I want to see this. What what are the options here? Am I going to go left? Am I going to go right? I'm going to go nowhere because we are at the end of this uh, third quarter. Now we're in the final quarter. Halfback dive time. I'm not going to go for a read. I actually i am not quite sure about those read options, to be honest. I'm not crazy happy about them. Oh, and it's a fumble. No. No. Yetur Gross Matus gets the ball here. David Montgomery drops the ball, and that hurts. All right, we do get it back. Sheesh, that was a close one. Let's go to the tight end angle. Again, looking for Chase Claypool on that super tight route. But we might actually... Tell you what. Looking for it. Okay, I'm not going to look for anything here. Chess Claypool is going to be my receiver. Good throw on the run here, Chase Claypool. Getting the first down. I wanted to go for a run here with Justin Fields. And then I just saw the defenders bearing down on me. So I just sort of threw that on the run. And I think it'll be essential to upgrade, uh, upgrade Justin Fields on the improviser route as fast as we can. Or improviser, uh, what is that? 
ar archetype or something like that, maybe. Oh, lower down. Well, that was too high. Didn't really go anywhere. Gindorf didn't even react. Uh, that was not satisfying. All right, left-hand side run. Do I have a clever one somewhere here? I could try this one, right? The bench switch. I think Claypool, St. Brown, they're fast runners. Darnell Mooney on that right-hand side. There we go. That was beautiful by Mooney. And a stiff arm here. On number 26. Well done, Darnell Mooney. Our uh, wide receiver number one. What a good job, actually. I have felt that was going to go into the hands of the defender or get slapped away by number 25. Missed that one. So, uh, actually, actually, I'm satisfied with that. That was good. Halfback zone weak left-hand side. We're going to go pound it again. They are setting up rather tightly. Do have a clever audible here. Could go with this one here, right? A bench. Probably some brown. There we go. Good stop. Catching the ball inbound, so the clock should be continuing to run down. It's not happening. Let's go to the mesh spot. I really am a little bit wary of going with something uh, with the with the read option here for fields. That is Gindorf, and Gindorf, the rookie, gets taken down at the six-yard line. Two minutes and 51 on the clock at the moment. I'm going to go with the read option. I just want to see what happens. Never really tried those. So what is the idea? Do I have to go to the left immediately? All right. So the basic idea is just run for the best and hope for it, right? Is that the idea? Two minute warning incoming right now. 17 and 10. I think we'll be able to draw this one. Uh, is what I'm going to say right now. The, the big question is, can our defense give us another lifeline? Off we go. 65. We need some blocking and we are inside the end zone. All right. That was a good one. David Montgomery sort of makes up for uh, his mistake from before. Because that was... That was really, really painful right there. But here we go. Good run. Good blocking by the offensive line, actually. And now... I really, really, really want to see our defense hold them. Come on, D. Come on, D. And they hold them. That is awesome. That is awesome, guys. All right, we're going to go with a shallow cross here. Still getting used to this playbook. Still getting used to this playbook. I feel like we could... They have such a bunch of outside zone runs. I'm not sure why. Not a big fan of those, to be honest. Darnell Mooney himself stopped here after five-yard gain. Let's go for the verticals. The clock is ticking down. I mean, a field goal would be brilliant. Otherwise, we go into overtime. And that is something that I'm not too keen on uh, seeing here. Good one here by David Montgomery. Good shove. Cameron Dicker. He's our kicker. I know, I know. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I, I don't know how many times I've made that joke already. And you know what? I'm going to keep... I'm going to keep doing it. Because... I personally find it to be hilarious, so. What's your favorite dad joke? Just pop that down below. This is brilliant. All right, Montgomery. We're going to go out of bounds here at the 48-yard line. Uh, actually, I did mean to disrespect him, but I have to say that he is certainly a solid runner. He's not Bijan, of course. Can't compare those. Would be unfair as well. But that was a really good one. That was a really good one. All right, up to the 48-yard line. Gonna go with the verticals again. I'm gonna be looking for Cole Komet again. So the space is here. Ah, oh, come on, Cole. 
No, that's not happening. Gonna, we're going to call for a timeout. Going to call for a timeout now. Just uh, let's not do anything rash here, right? So 17 seconds, 41 yard line. 24 zone open. Looking good over here. Tight end attack. I think that one makes sense. Let's go the tight end attack. Going to be looking for Montgomery. Just want him to break through. To go, go, man. Oh, we could get to the outside. Clock is ticking down. I'm going to stop it. I'm going to stop the time. And we're going to go for it. If we could get this field goal, then uh, that would actually be pretty cool. Would secure the first win of the season. But they are going to ice us. I just know it. Yeah, there we go. Damn you, Matt Rule. Damn you. All right. That was... Uh, that was clear as ice. Pun intended. There we go. Ah, uh, it's going to be to the right. Damn it. I know it. I knew it. And there we go. We're going to go into overtime. That is not what I wanted to see here. Can we win the coin toss, please? Stop the... Come on, D. All right. So they get a field goal. We need a field goal to draw the game, or we need a touchdown to win the game. Uh, inside zone split. Let's go for this one here. Nine seconds. Quick setup. Come on, guys. Go, 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 go. Oh, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna have to. Ah, oh, Cole Komet is in motion. Shove over here. Two minutes fourteen. We have time. We don't need to stress it. Got to get the five-minute mark right now. How the two-minute mark? Ah, oh, it's not even coming. All right. Equanimous St. Brown. I think I'm going to be looking for him. Old Cole Komet, also an option here. Man in motion. Off we go. Justin Fields. Good stop here. Number 26 chasing him down. But St. Brown was fast enough. Ah, that was a bullet. I mean, to be fair, Justin Fields right now is on the same level that uh, that Talia Tagovailoa was when we won the Super Bowl twice, right? He's above 80. Ah, yeah, that one didn't work. That one didn't work. He was just covered the whole way in about number 50. That's Joe Schobert, by the way. All right, Claypool or Komet. Uh, the time is ticking down so fast. All right, that was a brilliant one. Oh, this was fantastic, guys. That was very good. Let's go for some swagger here. There we go. Cole commit. I actually was I was watching another runner and suddenly he popped up free. Oh Jesus Christ! That clock ran down super fast. Oh, damn it, guys. Come on. 49 yards. I'm not going to say what I'm thinking right now, but again, they're going to ice us. Damn you, guys. Ah, oh, this is not good. This is not good. I really, really don't have a good feeling about this one. And this one... Oh, it's going to be to the left. Damn it. Well, that's a game. I oh, poop on a stick, man. That's the first loss this season. I really wanted to start better. And it's a close one as well. Really close one. 20 versus 17. That's annoying. That is annoying. Jimmy G versus Justin Fields. So yeah, here we go. We can see Justin Fields had a good game, right? 84% completion rate, 104 rating. Jimmy G was higher rated only because he had those touchdowns. On the running side, David Montgomery really, really, really did well. 
two touchdowns that fumble was unnecessary but we're gonna work on that one receiving side dj moore cole Komet was great david montgomery chase claypool really really felt good it was the first game and that wasn't wasn't too bad but my oh, man Jalen carter and drew tranquil are the uh solo tackle leaders total tackle leader oh my lord jeremy chin 11 robert quinn four tackles for loss well done and uh, three sacks uh for siaki ika robert quinn and justin jones zero interceptions today mike jackson senior cornerback we know we have to step it up everyone is disappointed in the fact that you gave us a vote of confidence i will let you down yeah well it's not ideal but it's better to fall short now than when it's win or go home we'll get things figured out okay well that sounds reasonable right on the other hand i am a little bit annoyed by this one to be honest because we weren't that far off um two missed field goal kicks uh, that sucks and the first one would have won us the game the second one lost us the game so yeah it's down to dicker that's a kicker and uh with the final punt intended um <laughs> i'm gonna cut this episode it was a little bit of a longer one but we had to take our time at the beginning of the season um yeah see you next week when we're gonna be playing the new york giants at home i uh, hope you enjoyed it drop me a like and subscribe let me know what you think in the comments and as always guys thank you so much for watching and see you next time